uh, the site plan so it has the same orientation. Oh, it makes it easier. Everyone's here, right? Okay. Um, as Joshua kind of gave and Mike kind of gave a little bit of an overview, I want to try and walk you through a little bit of where we are, how we got to this point, and kind of give you an idea of where we're kind of looking to go from here. Um, back, I think the last time that we met with everybody that I know that had to do in terms of the first round of spring that we did. Um, and there's basically, if you want to look at this, almost like two phases to this project. The first phase, which was basically completed, was basically the spraying and the clearing of the vegetation above the 10-foot contour on the island. We can't hear you back here, oh, so you <coughs> check a little bit better. All right. <laughs> Want some water? Uh, no, all right. All right, so the first phase Wait, was basically... Want a mic? A, is that better? Want a mic? Yes, no, yeah. no, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Boy, I would, by the way, for anyone and everyone, there is water back there for you. No, no, I'm fine. I'm just figuring this out. Um, so the first phase was basically uh, clearing a lot of the, basically all the Phragmites, the trees and the shrubs above the 10-foot contour. And the main reason for that one was so we could get an updated survey. The survey was important because we needed that in order for it to work on the actual redesign, which is now what's going on at the island now. So within the first phase, we did it, I think it was in like September of 2007, was when that first round of spraying went on. We were able to cut everything down and we were able to get the survey. And that work was basically completed last July. Uh, and that was basically the first phase of the project. We're now, since then, we we're also starting to work on the second phase, which is actually now the full redesign of the island. And as Joshua stated, there's basically two parts to it. The first part is, as many of you see, there's sandbags along the edges of the island, and that was done back, I want to say, eight or nine years ago, I think it was. A little more than that. Probably a little more. And it was done really as a temp, it was an emergency temporary measure because at that time, as many of you might know, there was garbage at that point breaching out from the sides of the island. And the idea was it was a temporary measure because we thought, we were hoping that this would follow up shortly behind it. And it didn't, but, so now we fast forward to this point. So now the first part that we're really looking to do is basically stabilize the edges of the island with more permanent solutions, no sandbags, uh, and Amanda will go into a little bit in terms of the different edge treatments that we're going to be looking to use. And then the second phase was basically capping the island with about, we're hoping up to 150,000 yards of sand. And then from that, it would then be replanted with all low grassland habitat. Okay? And again, that is to now replace the habitat that was lost over at the Gateway site. Okay? So at this point, we're, we're in design, we're moving pretty far along at this point. Um, and what you're seeing out right now is it came up basically, I would say, in the beginning of April, we found out there was an opportunity to get the sand from the dredging project that's going on in Rockaway Inlet. Um, there was a very tight time frame on that, and a lot of things had to come together all at once in order to make that happen. And the reason why we did that is because by getting the sand through that, we were able to get it, the sand onto the island through our whole, a marine-based delivery system. There were basically two options, either bring everything in by barge, or another option that we were looking at a while ago was possibly building a bridge from the golf course across and trucking it on. We really didn't want to do that because 150,000 yards generates a lot of truckloads. So with this one, we were able to take the use of the sand, which is what was originally being taken out to the ocean and dumped, as a better use of it, putting it on the island and capping it, and now we have clean sand. We're keeping all the trucks off the roads. Um, and so basically at this point, what you're seeing out there now, you'll see basically there's gonna be three piles out there. Um, there's three piles out there, uh, they're actually penned. They're in the process of filling the far one first, and they're going to work their way this way. And basically what we're doing right now is stockpiling the sand on the island until we have an approved plan from DEC. And at that point, once we have that, then we'll be allowed to then go to a contract be able to go out to bid, have a contractor, and at that point, then the actual work around the island will then start. Uh, and then we'll be moving it. Until then, until we have the approved plan, uh, it'll be staying still until that point. Uh, this fall, we'll probably be doing one more spraying um, because as you see the Phragmites is coming back again 
rather aggressively. Uh, we had promised when we spoke with Mike and everyone else that we said that we would give at least 30 days notice, which I believe from when we came here last time, we promised we would come back and we give everybody a, a heads up. Uh, the reason why we had to spring the fall is because that's when the plants will mature, taking in its most effective time in terms of spring. Uh, we're figuring it'll probably be somewhere around October, is um, one of the requests that Mike had. Everyone else was doing it as far after the motor season as we can. But we're also limited at a certain point. We have to do it while the plant's still alive to take in uh, to take in the spring. Again, everything will be, it won't be the rest, the, it'll be basically in the same area that was sprayed the last time. The edges are still going to remain. Those parts are not going to be sprayed. It will be contained to the upland stuff. But just to try and again give it another shot, and then hopefully in the spring, uh, by then we're looking to start construction. Again, once we get all our permits approvals, and at that point, then uh, all the sand moving, the, the uh, uh, reshoring of the edges, and all that stuff will be done. So that's kind of, uh, that's in a nutshell, that's kind of where we're at at this point. Uh, I guess I go, if Amanda wants to go into a little more about uh, sort of the edge treatment and more into the design portion of the island itself. Or if they have questions on the overall plan, yeah, if we get into too much detail, they'd be great. Yeah. Oh, sure. Back in the 1990s, the Superfund allotted X amount of money to capital city land dumps in New York City. And along with that, they gave you a structure of it would be put down with mesh, sand, mesh, and then more sand, and then planted on top. Are you going to do that to this land dump? With the mesh, the sand? It looks like the rest of the land dumps in New York City. Ken may be able to speak more towards solid waste and how solid waste landfills are typically capped and that this this landfill was closed prior to that law being implemented. So I don't know if Ken wants, do you want to explain a little bit about that? But that was for all the land dumps in New York City. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that Suzanne Mate can you see. There were four major old landfills in the city that were tested and declared to be inactive hazardous waste sites. And those went through a special closure process. One of them is actually right now in the process of, of going through that remediation of Brookfield landfill on Staten Island. But we also have the Pennsylvania Avenue landfill, uh, Pelham Bay landfill, Edgemere landfill, uh, Fountain Avenue landfill. The other one. So those, those um, had had tested, had been tested, and deemed to be hazardous. So they went through a different kind of process. This this area here has been tested. It has not been deemed to be hazardous. Still means that we have to be careful that we want to do the, the you know we have to, we have to be careful about addressing the sites and, and uh, you know managing it in a safe manner. But it doesn't it doesn't qualify as a hazardous waste site, and it's not classified as a hazardous waste site. Well, so we are requiring that they we are requiring that they have a that they place a cover on it, and we're requiring that they stabilize the sites. In it. But that's so in other words, you're not worried about leaching or anything else like that. Is that my assumption? At this point. We're not we're not concerned about a significant amount of leaching from this facility. It's it's been there in its condition for many many years. There's sort of been a washing in and a washing out. And many years ago, there was probably stuff that came out of it. But at this point, as from the testing that we've done, we're not identifying that as a hazard. But we do want to see the site properly contained, which means 